How elements take up space on the page is controlled by their display. There used to be two broad display types in CSS. Elements were either inline or block level. Block elements start on a new line and fill the width of their parent container. Inline elements remain in a line and only take up the width of their contents. In HTML5, elements are categorized differently. The broadest categories being flow content and phrasing content. There are further categories for embedded content, interactive content, and form associated content, but there's a lot of crossover between these different categories. Here's a list of flow content elements. Elements like div, article, section, and form are block-like elements, which often contain many other child elements. But this list also contains anchor tags, emphasis tags, uh, span tags, and input, which are inline elements. Often they're found in running text, where it would be undesirable for them to start on a new line. The list of phrasing content elements doesn't include a lot of the block-like elements from flow content, but it does include things like M, span, and input, which are also in the previous list. It turns out there's no one-to-one -one mapping of block to flow content and inline to phrasing content, so we better look elsewhere. First, it's worth noting that in HTML, all elements are inline by default and their display characteristics are largely determined by the user agent style sheet, or set by us when we write CSS. If we look through the user agent style sheet of Chrome, we find the following list of elements that have their display property set to block. There's a few oldies in here too for backwards compatibility. So, if there are 44 block elements in Chrome, and all HTML elements are in line by default, the rest must be in line, right? Well, not exactly, as there are more values for display than just in line and block. We have uh, display none for hiding things. There's also in line block, table, in line table, table cell, table column, table column group, table footer group, table header row, table row, table row group, list item, run in, and new layout modes like flex, inline flex, grid, and inline grid. It would take too long to look at all of these, so let's take a selection of the most commonly used. A div is a generic box that has display block by default. The box is the full width of the page and as high as necessary to contain all its content. Blocks can be spaced out with margin. In contrast, a span, which is display in line by default, only takes up the width of its contents and doesn't respond to properties like width, height, and margin. We can set the display property of this span to block, and then all of these properties will apply. It's common to want the benefits of both block and inline at the same time. Fortunately, display inline block has us covered. Inline block is a great way to turn an unordered list of links into a horizontal nav. We can also apply spacing with padding and add a background color to each one if we like. One thing you'll notice is that even though there's no margin on these items, there is a small space between them. This space can be removed by setting the font size to zero, or by removing the white space between the tags in the markup. An alternative is to use an HTML comment to close the gap before and after each item. If this process seems a little clunky, there's an alternative approach using float. Using tables used to be the way the web was built. Fortunately, that's not the case anymore, but sometimes the way that a table element lays out is beneficial. Instead of using a table element, we can use a div with display table and child elements with display table cell. One of the benefits of this layout is that table cells have equal heights, something that can be 
difficult to achieve otherwise.